It's time for another LA Kings fan feedback show. We hear from you on Pierre-Luc Dubois, Andre Kopitar's extension, Matt Roy, Trevor Lewis, Kings prospects, and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. It is time for another Kings fan feedback show. We do these every week, give you a chance to let us know what's on your mind with your questions and your comments on anything involving the LA Kings or any of the past shows we've done over the past week or so. Uh, So we'll get to the emails first, which is what we usually do. And our first email comes from Kyle. Now, he does not include where his location is, so that means I get to make it up. And I'm going to say Kyle is in Canoga Park. Uh, He says, Kyle says, just some thoughts on the overall direction of the team post Pierre-Luc Dubois trade and goaltender signings. When the Kings dealt Peterson to make the Gabakov signing happen, I felt like they were setting it up to go all in on a championship run this year. But with the PLD trade and the sign, it seems like they've shifted slightly. Looks like PLD was too tempting as a replacement for Kopitar, soft replacement, and Blake shifted gears. I think the Kings' win-now mentality becomes much less urgent. They now all of a sudden have a younger team that they aren't on the clock like they were with the narrative surrounding Dowdy and Kopitar's last chances to win. They'll still be a playoff team, but I think all of this is setting up for a big move next summer with Kopitar's cap cap hit coming down, likely resigning, but probably in the $6 million range, my guess. You were close, $7 million. Uh, And the cap itself goes up. So with no pressing contracts next offseason other than Kopitar's, you're looking at potentially $8 to $9 million to go out and get that goalie LA will likely need to make a serious run at a championship. So overall, I understand all the moves so far this summer. But I think Kings fans need to be realistic with expectations this year. Cam Talbot was a good signing for the price, but at the end of the day, I don't know that he and Copley will be good enough to get past Edmondson or Vegas. I would also expect Copley to regress to his career mean, though I certainly hope that's not the case. I was bummed about moving Gillardi, but he just had his healthiest season to date and still only played something like 63 games. At the end of the day, the greatest ability is availability. I understand Kings management's apprehension in signing Gillardi long term. I have followed as a cap casualty, and I wish him well with the Jets, but the Kings should be able to overcome his absence in the lineup. This year reminds me of LA's uh, in 2013 when Muzzin was forced into bigger minutes, even though he probably wasn't ready, and there were some growing pains, but it eventually led to him being a major contributor to LA's 2014 run. Thank you, Kyle, for the very well thought out and uh, reasoned email. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, it is very possible that we should keep in mind that while uh, we want the Kings to do well this season, that uh, with the realities of the salary cap, that sometimes as a general manager, you have to have a bigger picture in mind. So I think it's very fair to say that the Kings have made moves, maybe not for this season, but as you said, for next season, when they'll have more cap space, uh, obviously Kopitar, his contract has $3 million more million available now, and uh, that he can look to make uh, that big addition in net if necessary for next season. So I think it's a good point that uh, there, there could be a bigger picture in mind. Again, not that we don't want the Kings to do well this year. To I, I do think there's absolutely pressure to have a better showing in the postseason, get out of the first round at least. Um, but as far as the bigger picture, which is what we all want, hopefully another Stanley Cup title, that it is certainly possible that uh, – Next season is a season the Kings maybe go all in. I think the only thing I might push back in on was your comment about Felix Copley regressing. Um, I, I can't speak for the advanced analytics, but just looking at his basic numbers, just goals against average and his save percentage. Uh, last season, he had a 2.64 goals against average and a 903 save percentage. In his NHL career, 
his goals against the average is 2.8 and save percentage is 902. So I think those numbers uh, could be very similar for Phoenix Copley because that's pretty much what he's done over his career. Uh, now, certainly the win percentage was very uh, much better than his career uh, last season, but I think that's because he, he played on a better team. So I'm not sure that Copley's numbers are going to dip anything significantly next season. Uh, our next email comes from Mike. He's in Reno, Nevada. And he says, uh, one thing I didn't fully understand is how they gave up on Leas Anderson, who signed with the Habs uh, because the Kings let him go. Uh, when Velarde struggled, they sent him down to Ontario two seasons ago to find his game and work on playing wing instead of center. He did exactly what the team asked and turned into a point per game player. He had 15 goals, 23 assists and 38 points in 39 games in the AHL. The following season, he came to camp fired up and not only won a roster spot on the Kings, but had great success last season. They asked Leah Sanderson to do the same thing. He scored 31 goals, 28 assists for 59 points in 67 games. So why exactly would we not want to have Anderson back in camp this year to give him the same chance we gave Velarde? Maybe he could have also turned the corner. And I mean, 31 goals is awesome, is it not? They shipped out another 30-goal scorer in Martin Furk. They sold us on that because Ferk was much older than the younger prospects, but that's not the case with Anderson, is it? He's only 24. He proved himself and turned into a dominant goal scorer and was close to a point-per-game player in the AHL. Why do you get rid of a player that did exactly what you asked him to do? Now, some might say Velarde is just a better player, but for those of you who don't know, Anderson was the same draft as Velarde and actually went four spots higher than Velarde. Not sure with a good chunk of goals and point scores now gone in Velarde, I follow in Jersey, uh, we were so quick to find uh, to be fine with parting with Anderson too. My guess is that next season we're going to go back to that Kings team that needed to score, that needed more goal scoring. I mean, how long did we hear that for? I know we seem to have gotten rid of a lot of players that can put the puck in the net and score. I just don't see the math on how Blake expects us to make up for the points with PLD scoring 66 points last year compared to 130 combined with Velarde, I have followed Jersey and Kupari. Another thing is the majority of those players that left were also good defensive players as well. From what I've heard, PLD is not known for his defensive skills. I just see a lot of question marks in recent Blake moves. Uh, good email, uh, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, definitely do agree that uh, the defensive side of things have likely taken a bit of a hit with the losses of players like Ayafalo and Velarde. Um, as for Leah Anderson, I would just say this. Stats in the AHL are not what they might seem. Uh, I will just point this out. And for those of you that know this name, you know what kind of player he was when he was in LA. The leading goal scorer in the AHL this season with 37 was Andy Andrioff. Now, if you don't know who that is, he's a former Kings third round pick. I had a couple of seasons in LA and he stunk. He was terrible. Uh, he didn't do anything. And they kept playing him. And uh, it always drove me crazy. Uh, he, he just, by the way, he led the AHL in goal scoring and he just got released by the New York Islanders. He's going to go play in the KHL next year and nothing against Andy Androff. It's not a personal thing or at all. Uh, I just really, I was not a fan of his game because he didn't do anything. So that just gives you a little bit of a, an example of numbers in the AHL, not necessarily being what you might think they are. Um, Look, you, you do bring up a good point with the age of Leah Sanderson. And Andy, Andy Androff's 32 years old, by the way. So that's part of the reason why he, he was let go. Um, so we'll see about Leah Sanderson. But I, again, I would just say the numbers are not quite what you might think they were. And as you pointed out yourself, uh, the investment in Gabe Velarde for the Kings was much higher than the investment uh, for Leah Sanderson. Leah Sanderson, they picked up off waivers. That was the Rangers high draft pick that they uh, they wanted to work out. So the Kings didn't invest much in Anderson. I think the numbers are a bit misleading. If he eventually catches on somewhere, good for him. But I think the Kings just feel like those numbers weren't quite what you might think they were. And they've got other younger players that they uh, feel like they've kind of been more invested in. So I was not surprised to see Leah Anderson go. But you, you, you bring up a good point. He, he did do exactly what they asked him to do. He did put up the numbers, regardless of how they translate to the NHL. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, like I said, those, the AHL numbers, they're nice. Um, you like to see them, but I don't put as much stock into them as you might think, um, uh, they should warrant. Um, and real quick on the comparison, you mentioned, uh, what was it? 66 points from Pierre-Luc Dubois last year to 130 combined 
with the four players, the Kings, and Dur- we'll include Dursey in that because it was the, the draft pick. But that's you can't do you can't do that. Uh, that's not fair. Obviously, uh, unless you're talking about like Connor McDavid and four guys, the, you can't compare four the, the production of four players to one. What you have to do, and we will definitely do this in the offseason when we look back on this trade and how it works out for at least one season, you got to take Pierre-Luc Dubois' numbers along with the other four players or three players that replaced uh, Ayafalo and Dursey and Kupari. You can't just do one for four. Uh, the Kings are using other players to fill the roles of those guys that left. So take those numbers with Pierre-Luc Dubois, and I feel very confident you will get at least 130 points from the four players that are now playing uh, for the LA Kings this year. Uh, this comes from Don L in North Hollywood. Uh, he says, now that the team has traded Velarde and Kupari, the Kings only have one right-handed shot in their top nine forwards, Victor Arvidsson. The only other right shot on the big club will be Samuel Fagimo, the rookie candidate for a fourth line right wing spot. That makes it uh, imperative for the club to extend Arvidsson as soon as possible, in my opinion. Luckily, no additional money will be needed for this upcoming season, but the season is Arby's last on his present contract at $4.25 million per year. In my opinion, it would be hard to add 500 k to 7500 k per season and offer Arvidsson three additional years, say, at $4.75 million or maybe $5 million per season. That would keep RV in the fold until he's 34 and other right shot forwards in the organization like Chromiak and LaFerriere will have a chance to develop. I'd like to ask you, do you think it's a problem to have so few right shooting forwards on the NHL club? Will that make the Kings more predictable on offense? Don, that is quite the observation. I got I to gotta say, I had not noticed what you have pointed out, but you are correct looking at the roster uh, Victor Arbutson is the only right-handed shot of any of the King's core offensive players. Uh, so I have heard, uh, that right-handed shooters are, have a better advantage in goal scoring because most NHL goalies handle their sticks in their right hand. And players say that the catching glove hand, uh, usually provides more areas to shoot at. So, um, you're right in your observation, um, and and you're right in that uh, most NHL players feel like there is an advantage to being a right-handed shot, and the Kings only have one right now in Victor Arvidsson. So I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's something that uh, anybody's losing any sleep over with the Kings. But that said, it is a very, very interesting observation on your part, uh, and it, it may you know, be a tiny factor uh, in the Kings. Maybe, you know, you'd like to have a few more right-handed shots in your lineup. But overall, I still think the Kings uh, and management are pretty happy with the lineup that they have, with the players that they have. But but, but it is a good, really good observation and something that I, frankly, had not thought about. Uh, we got a couple more emails and all your YouTube comments, even a Twitter question as well. Uh, we will get to that in just a second on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Take your first swings at betting on Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first amount back in a bonus bet that is up to $200. That's right. Just bet $20 and you'll land $200 in a bonus bet, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend on betting from anything from the money line to over-under to who you think will hit the first home run of the game, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There is no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in a bonus bet. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Uh, we have an email from Robert. He says he's in the South Bay. Uh, it's a little broad, but we'll allow it. Uh, he says, uh, Dear Eddie, as you know, I'm an everydayer. Love that. Uh, I can see PLD galvanizing the Kings and possibly giving the Kings a three headed dragon in Kempe Fiala and himself. Do you feel the Kings will play with a swag about themselves or chip on their shoulders? Being Edmonton's little brother in the Pacific Division, stoked for the upcoming season. Can we finish first or second in the Pacific? Go Kings go. And that is from Robert. Um, well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I have heard that Pierre-Luc Dubois does play with a bit of an edge and that sometimes that's a positive and sometimes that's a negative when he takes some bad penalties. Um, can we finish first or second? Yes. Uh, but to be honest, 
I don't really care too much about that. Uh, I'm obviously I'd love the Kings to have a great regular season and give us a lot of fun things to to talk about and to see. Um, but in the end, frankly, just just get into the playoffs. If they finish third or in a wild card spot, that's fine. Uh, the Pacific is going to be a tough division. Um, but I, you know, as as I think we've all gotten to the point now, and we've seen uh, you know with a team like Florida barely getting to the playoffs and making it to the final. You know, regular season's great. Seedings, potential matchups, I get it. But in the end, it's all about let's just get in and then and do our damage there. There, so I, I'm not too uh, into concerned about if it's if we if we can finish first or second. That would be great. But uh, in the end, let's just get in and then uh, and then let's play our best hockey uh, at the right time. Uh, let us get to your YouTube comments. But I did get a Twitter message that I wanted to include, which is an option for you guys if you ever want to give some feedback for the show. Uh, and this comes from Twitter. Uh, this is from at Nick of row 78. He says all the latest moves. Uh, can you run down the young prospects that might be able to snag a spot on the team? Really curious about Laferriere's chances or will Vagamo finally be able to break through? Will Calia be slotted into the top six now? Thanks for your time and all you do. Uh, I would assume that you're only asking about the forwards as far as the young players. But if you're looking for young players to contribute next season, certainly defensively, you've got Brant Clark, Jordan Spence, and Tobias Bjornfoot likely in that bottom third uh, pairing. As for the forwards, I don't see Laferriere being in the mix for a fourth line spot unless there are injury issues. Uh, Fagamo could be in the mix, um, but he'll be competing against guys like Carl Grundstrom and Jarrett Anderson Dolan. So if those guys are healthy, a little bit more proven. Uh, I would expect those guys to be on that fourth line. Also, you've got Trevor Lewis and Blake Lazat as well. So a little bit crowded. So I would say probably not for Fagamo at this point, but he's in the, he's, he's in the mix. Um, as far as uh, Kalia being a top six forward, uh, I would say doubtful, um, especially when you consider that Todd McClellan seems to like to have the, the, the matchups, of you know your centers, we know who the centers are going to be. Andre Kobatar, Pierre Luc Dubois are going to be top two centers, uh, and then he likes to kind of get in there with a Trevor Moore and a Quentin Byfield, and so that leaves your really high end wingers, Kevin Fiala, Adrian Kempe, Victor Arbitson in the mix. So I would say because of Moore and Byfield, unlikely that Kaliev can crack that top six. I think he'll probably be on the third line, but we'll see. Maybe. Maybe McClellan shakes things up. Maybe, you know, Quentin Byfield and Trevor Moore are third liners. If that's the case, then yes. Then Arthur Callaway could be on the wing on, on that second line. But I would say it's more likely he'll be on the third line. Uh, to the YouTube comments, and uh, this comment was in, uh, regarding our interview with Harrison Lee, the host of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, who gave us some uh, thoughts on Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, this comes from Dr. Bob 512 and he says, uh, Good interview, Eddie. Thanks. I agree with him that the Jets got the better of the Kings in the PLD trade. I didn't like the trade for the Kings then, and I still don't like it. Uh, I hope Dubois becomes a real star, scoring 35 to goals and 75 to 80 points. Otherwise, the trade will make the Kings worse. Kings should have signed a true number one goalie instead. Kings are now maybe the worst team in net in the NHL. Uh, I got to push back on that one there, Dr. Bob. I, I was, I was, look, I, I have no issue with people. Uh, thinking the Kings pay too much and that Pierre-Luc Dubois is not going to be that big of an impact player. That remains to be seen. Um, and you're certainly well within your right to not like the trade, but the goalie, the goalie part of it, mm, I'm going to push back on that a little bit. Uh, if you looked at teams like San Jose, Chicago, Montreal, Columbus, Buffalo, Arizona, uh, none of those teams have great situations in that. I think the Kings are better than any of those teams. Now, if you had said maybe not the greatest situation of any of the playoff teams from last year, you may have an argument there, um, but I still actually like the Cam Talbot edition. I think he's going to work out. We'll see. Uh, this comes from Scott Casey, 9240 on you on uh, YouTube. He says, Eddie, here's my take on the PLD trade. He may be a true. It may be true. Sending three players and a draft pick seems like a ton. In reality, it comes down to an impact player. If PLD comes in and is a monster in the middle and gives us the deepest center position in the league, then that's all that matters. The Kings sent three players that are solid role guys, but won't get you to the next level. Let's say the Kings face, God forbid, the Oilers in the playoffs for their third time. Would any of those three players 
that we sent make a difference in the series? Probably not. There's a chance, however, that PLD can make a difference where a team can't keep up with our third lines, and that's enough to sway the series. Of course, Blake could look terrible in this trade, but no risk, no reward. I'm a little nervous that the Kings spent that kind of money without addressing the goaltending issue, but again, if Copley plays well, uh, it's like going into the playoffs with uh, a different look in net. Winnipeg isn't going to light the NHL on fire with those guys. Win a cup where the Kings could light the NHL on fire and possibly win a cup. That's simple. Uh, go Kings, go. And again, that was from Scott Casey. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I do agree with most of what you said. Uh, maybe Velarde does blossom into a really good NHL player, but I still think his ceiling is kind of what Pierre-Luc Dubois gives you now. So you're giving up a guy who could be a player that you, you now have. And obviously you're swapping a center for a winger. Uh, we got this on the Andre Kopitar extension. This comes from BH Becca says great deal on Kopitar gives him 3 million more in cap space next year. Kopitar might lose a step, but he's still solid and productive and shows up every game. Mr. Dependable. And he played and he helped the team uh, by taking less despite still leading the team and scoring pretty good guy. Yeah, I'd say pretty good. I'd say pretty good guy. Um, I think that 7 million per season is fair. Uh, he's still very productive, still an impact player. Uh, that deal was not one of those deals where you're rewarding past success for a legendary player, um, even though that you can understand if that was part of it. But he's still, like I said, still consistent, still productive. Um, and, you know, there were, look, there was no way he was going to demand the $10 million that he's been getting over the last eight years. Um, so I think it makes sense for him to feel like, look, I'm still a very productive player. I've done a lot for this organization. Uh, you know, I want to be compensated fairly. But by the same token, we'll take a little bit less to try and help the team out as well. Kind of a win-win, I think, for both sides. Uh, this from Ricky Hazel 1030 on YouTube. This is uh, about the player profile we did on Matt Roy. He says, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'll say it to anyone who listens. Matt Roy is the most underrated player in the NHL. Roy is one of the few players who McDavid seemingly tries to avoid going straight at. I feel he is the smartest player on the ice. Whenever he's on the ice, no matter who's on the ice, He'll get you 100-plus hits and 100-plus block shots while maintaining a positive plus-minus, taking a few penalties, and getting you 25 points every year. That being said, unless Kopitar takes a massive pay cut and the cap goes up more than projections or Clark and or Spence aren't good enough, I don't see how LA can keep him. He is a far better player than Gabrikov, uh, who should be paid at least as well, and LA just doesn't have the cap space. Uh, this was posted before the Kopitar extension, so I'm not sure how Ricky feels about the $3 million less that Kopitar will be making. Um, but uh, yes, Roy and Arvidsson, as it stands right now, are the Kings only UFAs after this coming season. And uh, we'll, we'll see. I think that uh, getting Matt Roy back in the fold will be a priority. But as we have heard, there's only so many slices of the pie that can go around, but we shall see. Uh, we uh, have some more. YouTube comments to pass along. We'll do that on this episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. After you finish with this show, check out Locked on NHL. They'll keep you updated on all things NHL, including the latest free agent signings and news from across the league. That is Locked on NHL on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. Uh, this from YouTube on the future of the Kings taking the ice for development camp. This comes from Dominic Ephraim 3088 it says, Eddie, sorry for the long post, but on the new guys coming to the Kings camp this season and uh, that are most likely going to play in Ontario. I'm really excited to see this take shape. Tynan will still be the captain. Uh, losing Leah Sanderson was a bummer. Ward, Madden and Dubas coming back. is going to be a plus. Uh, Dudas had some really good chemistry to start with Chromiak before Chrome got injured. Helenia should take it up a notch. The guy is tailor-made for the NHL in the next few years. Pelini, Laferriere, and hopefully Hughes, I'm uh, pretty excited about. Krieger, I don't know a lot about, but I'll keep an eye on him. Uh, not clear yet whether Spence plays in LA full-time or Clark does, but one of them will be headed to the rain since both are on entry-level contracts and are waiver-exempt and can be called up at will. Since LA is most likely going to play a 20-man roster next season, more than likely don't carry extra two players for the 22-man roster like they did by carrying Kupari and Jared Anderson Dolan uh, and scratching them consistently, just the 20-man roster and call up guys as needed, which means either Spencer Clark takes the right side pairing in LA while the other side, while the other plays in Ontario, but it's on, but is on call. Bjorn Foot should take the left side third pairing because him and Spence have already played a full season together in Ontario in every situation as the number one pairing. They could easily be paired as a third pairing with specialized duties in LA. Spence on the power play and Bjornfoot on the PK. 
Mo Varari, I see, uh, moving into the top pairing in Orlando with Clark if Clark gets sent down. Mo Varari is solid team stats. When he's on the ice, uh, the team shoots more compared to when he's not on the ice. I should work well with Clark, who will most likely try to be more offensive. Um, starting to get excited about how Ontario is shaping up. Can't wait to see how it shakes out. So very good. Not only excited about uh, the Kings, but excited about the AHL team for the Kings as well. Uh, I think good point on the waiver exemption. Uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, players who are waiver exempt uh, can go back and forth from the AHL to the NHL without having to go through waivers and being claimed by other teams. So uh, Spence and Clark are waiver exempt. Actually, uh, Quentin Byfield and Arthur Kaliev are still waiver exempt as well. Uh, but that's it for the Kings players who we could see uh, moving up and down from the AHL to the NHL. It'll be interesting to see how they handle Clark. I still have him starting day one in the NHL, but that remains to be seen. A couple more quick comments. Um, this on the Trevor Lewis signing, him coming back to LA. Uh, the Lone Rangers says, I really like the Lewis signing for the fourth line and the PK duties. Uh, I am warming up on the Talbot signing. He ties to McClellan style and is... Uh, in the drive to win, uh, those are selling points. We just need a bit above average at goal, and we'll make up everything else. Trust that Blake is learning, and the scout team knows what they're doing. Go Kings, go. Uh, General Lee Concepts says, anyone who reads my thoughts knows I'm thrilled with the addition and return of Trevor Lewis. It won't matter if he can keep up with the speedier young talents in the league, whether he lasts a season or two. Hopefully, he will join fellow alumni working with future players. I will never forget him from Game 5 against Vancouver. All it took was stripping Dan Ham use of the puck and sending it to Jarrett Stoll. And the 2012 Kings were on their way to the second round. It was the stuff of dreams. Uh, and real quick, one more. This was from LA Kings fan with a Z. Uh, this was uh, on the uh, LA Kings all-time uh, American-born roster that I had out there on the 4th of July show. He says, thanks for doing this on the holiday, Eddie. Made my commute and uh, a fun episode. Um one pick I'd consider for my all-time American Kings defenseman would be Matthew Schneider. He was a very good offensive defenseman and made those early 2000 Kings teams very fun to watch and could have easily won a cup with those teams if not for having to run into those monster ab teams at the time. Yeah, you know, those. The, what's fun about those, you know, all-time teams or those teams that you kind of put together for whatever, you know, whatever reason uh, is that you can debate it and you can have fun with, I would have put this guy in, I wouldn't have included this guy, that kind of thing. Um, but I did consider Matthew Schneider, but there were a couple other players who have played more games with the Kings and a few more seasons. And you, you look, Matthew Schneider was a better player overall in his NHL career than a couple of the guys that I included. But I wanted it to be more about the Kings and, and Schneider. He you know, played three seasons in L.A. Um, most of his career was spent elsewhere. So I kind of focused more on guys who played longer with the L.A. Kings. But Matthew Schneider is a very, very good player. Hey, thank you to everyone who took the time to email or comment. Uh, this show is obviously not possible without you. Uh, for you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch every day, uh, coming up next week, we will have a full report on all the happenings that went down over the past few days at the Kings Development Camp. Uh, we are scheduled to have a guest join us next week to break down a little more in detail the Kings 2023 NHL draft selections. We'll also continue our player evaluations and, of course, cap it off at the end of the week with another Kings fan feedback show the email address if you would like to send an email at any time locked on eddie at gmail.com e-d-d-i-e -E. uh, we'd love for you to stay connected with the show by following us on twitter and instagram we are at locked on la kings i'm eddie garcia thank you as always for listening and watching locked on la kings part of the locked on podcast network have a great weekend we will talk to you on monday and as always go kings go